Hello, in this video we're going to go over an IML problem from 1977. Let n be the set of all positive integers. Find all functions from n to n for which f of n plus 1 is greater than f of f of n for all n in n. So the first thing that I notice is that clearly f of n equals n is a solution. Now, I tried linear functions and other types of functions, maybe quadratics. None of those really work because if you look at a quadratic, this side is a quadratic, this side is a polynomial of degree 4. So at that point, I thought maybe f of n equals n is the only solution. The first thing that I noticed after that was that f of n plus 1 can be f of anything that is more than 1. So if I look at f of 2, f of 2 is more than f of f of 1. So I can apply this one for f of 2, but I cannot apply this one for f of 1. If I start with f of 1, I cannot write it down as more than f of f of 0 because 0 is not a natural number. So what does that mean? It means f of 2 is more than something. f of 3 is also more than something more than f of f of 2 etc so what does it mean it means the smallest value in this sequence is probably going to be f of 1 if I look at f of 2 f of 2 is definitely more than 1 because f of 2 is more than some natural number so if you look at the smallest value, the smallest f in this sequence, it would have to be f of 1. So the first claim is f of 1 is 1. Let's see how I can prove this one. So here's how I approach this one. So let's assume that f of 1 is more than 1. If the f of 1 is more than 1, then I can write down f of 2 greater than f of f of 1. I know that everything is more than 1. I also know that f of n is more than 1 for every n. So I can write this one down as greater than f of f of f of 1 minus 1. Now this f is also more than 1. So I can write this one down as more than f of f of f of f of n minus 1 minus 1. And keep going. So that means f of 2 must be uh, more than infinitely many positive integers, which is impossible. So that shows that f of 1 is equal to 1. Now if I start from f of 2, I was hoping to show f of 2 is 2, and then maybe I can repeat the same process. So can I show that f of 2 is equal to 2? Well, I started with f of 2 greater than f of f of 1. So this side is 1. Uh, but that doesn't show you that f of 2 is 2, it just shows you that f of 2 is at least 2. Then I looked at f of 3, f of 3 is greater than f of f of 2. Let's assume that f of 2 is more than 2 and see if we can get a contraction. So this would be more than f of f of, so I'm going to apply the same inequality. Now if I want to apply it to this one, I need to know whether this is more than 2 or um, uh, greater than or equal to 2 or equal to 1. So at that point I realized that if I want to kind of create this type of a decreasing sequence it is better to use what we call in problem solving extremal principle. What does that mean? It means we look at extreme cases. For example largest or smallest are two extreme cases. So here is now how I thought about uh, going about solving the problem. So let's assume that f of a is the smallest value among f of 2, f of 3, and so on. I have already shown that this value is more than or equal to 2 because we know that f of 1 is 1 and everything else is more than f of 1. Now let's look at f of a. f of a is greater than f of f of a minus 1. So we know that by the assumption. Now f of a was the smallest value in this set. So what does it mean? It means this guy would have to be f of 1 because if this quantity is either 2 or 3 or 4 or so on, this quantity cannot be the smallest value. 
So that tells us that f of a minus 1 would have to be 1. And that means a minus 1 must be 1 because everything, f of everything is more than 1 except for f of 1. And that tells us that a must be 2. So what does it mean? It means the smallest value in this sequence, so f of 2, is in fact minimum of f of 2, f of 3, etc. So that is in fact the smallest value. Now I tried to show that f of 2 is equal to 2, but I wasn't quite successful. So, but what I do know right now is that f of 1 is 1, which is less than f of 2, which is less than the rest of them, because I know the minimum would have to be at a equals 2. So now, let, now let's look at the rest of these and look at the minimum of those. So let's assume f of a is the minimum of f of 3, f of 4, etc. And let's see what happens. If that's the case, f of a is greater than f of f of a minus 1, again by assumption, but because f of a is the minimum, that tells you f of a minus 1 would have to be less than or equal to 2. So it's either 2 or it is 1. So f of a minus 1 is 1 or it is 2. So what does it mean? It means a minus 1, because f of 3, f of 4, and so on, none of those can be 2 or 1, because the first two numbers are f of 1 and f of 2. So that tells you that a minus 1 cannot exceed 2. So that tells you a is at most 3, which means a is in fact equal to 3, because a must be somewhere between 3, 4, so on. But we also know that a is less than or equal to 3, so a is in fact exactly 3. Okay, so now let's see if we can extend this in general. So here is now the claim. The claim is f of 1 is less than f of 2 less than f of n for all integers n. And I'm going to show that this is also less than the rest of them. So fn plus 1, etc. So let's assume we have proved this one. We showed that uh, is true for n equals 1 and n equals 2. So let's say f of a is the minimum among all of the fn plus 1, fn plus 2, etc. I'm going to have to show that a is in fact n plus 1. So how do we show this? we will do something similar. So f of a is greater than f of f of a minus 1. But now, because f of a is greater than this and f of a is the minimum, that means f of a minus 1 must be one of the previous numbers, must be at most n. But f of a minus 1 being at most n, because there are n numbers in this range, it means a minus 1 cannot exceed n which means a is at most n plus 1. But we do know that a is at least n plus 1 because f of a is from that range. So that tells us a is equal to n plus 1, which means f of n plus 1 is less than everything after that. So f of n plus 2, f of n plus 3, etc. So by induction, we showed that in fact, f of 1 is less than f of 2, less than f of 3, etc. Okay, so this tells us that the function is strictly increasing. So now, let's look at the inequality that we were given. So we have this inequality. Since the function is strictly increasing, that tells us n plus 1 is greater than f of n. But if you look at this sequence, there are n minus 1 numbers before f of n. If you look at f of n, there are f of 1, f of 2, all the way to f of n minus 1. So that tells us that f of n cannot be less than n. It's at least n. Because of these two, we deduce that f of n must be exactly n for all positive integers n. And that brings you to the end of this solution. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I will see you in the next video.